everyone. I'm here with the Bible reading. I hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to read today's prayer. Psalm 56, verse 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God. Amen. Hands are swollen. Okay, let me do our prayer request since I've got the book out. Sorry I haven't been here in the last couple days. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask you guys to pray for sure. We didn't get to make it to his appointment at the surgeon like he had been looking forward to because he's in so much pain. Because when we got home from having my echocardiogram, he had, he had dinner. And he started feeling really sick, like he was going to throw up, but he did, He threw up in his mouth a few times. Um, I had him, he had my trash can, you know, just in case. And he was so cold, so, so cold, he could not stop shaking. And I could see, like, his side of his face just quivering, quivering back and forth. I mean, it was, it was really scary. And we went to bed. And it was early, but we went to bed so he could get covered up and everything. And by the time we got in there, he had already had a fever. He was really hot. But then he started throwing the blankets off that I had I had made his side of the bed. And I even gave him my blanket, you know, because he was so cold. And like I said, he started kicking them off. He was too hot. Didn't use any of them. He went from freezing to hot. And that's not him at all because he's always cold. And he like just went to sleep. I got a picture of him even. His mouth just gaped open the whole time. He was real pale. His fingernails were like purple blue. And I kept like smacking him in the face trying to wake him up because he wouldn't wake up. I was so scared. Stayed awake all night watching him. I was crying and screaming and praying. I didn't know what to do. And you see, I didn't think about it. My aunt's like, did you check sugar? I didn't even, you know, I was just, I didn't know what to do. And I was just terrified. I'd say, you want me to call the ambulance? Do you want me to call the ambulance? Like, no. I thought, well, I don't know. Because if the ambulance would come get him, I would have no way to get there. Because I didn't have anybody to take me there. And I sent Mom a message. I remember at like 5 o'clock in the morning asking her if she'd come take us to the hospital, that we'd need my nephew to help get him in the car. But they never came. And it was, I don't know. I don't know what it was. But I kept like moistening his lips with this electrolyte water that I have. I, uh, I kept trying to wake him up. I kept him warm. I put my oxygen on him. And uh, the next morning, after a while, like half the half the daytime, he started coming around a little. And I prayed and prayed and prayed. I think that's the only thing that helped. And it scared me. I thought for sure he was dying. That's how bad it was. I never seen nothing like it. I never seen nothing like it in my life. So I don't know what caused that, but. I'm scared to death of it happening again. So please pray that it doesn't. Please pray he doesn't get like that again. He goes to the doctor on Monday, so. And his urine, when he did get up to pee, it was very, very dark, like brown. And I'm gonna request a urine test to test for a kidney or a bladder infection or blood in the urine, something. I know he was dehydrated, I'm sure. I always got to get on to him to drink. But then later that day, when he started getting a little bit better, you know, he was able to get up and talk and stuff. And I was, can not tell you how happy I was. And he was drinking and then he said his urine was clear. So I don't know what I keep telling him to drink. And he goes to Dr. Monday, so hopefully we find out something. Babe, you need to check your sugar while you're in there. He 
she's in there getting something to eat right now. Stuff, stomach's been hurting. You behave. You guys seen the video how he was acting earlier that day. He was perfectly fine. And then, just after he ate, he had a microwave pizza. We had just got home and he put a microwave pizza in the microwave. One of those little personal ones, you know? And then, like right after that, he started getting sick. It was the scariest thing. One of the scariest things I've ever experienced in my life. I'm not good at pressure when I'm alone. Let's just say that. Okay. Sorry. So, please continue to pray for Sherm. It's really serious. Please pray for my mom, Rhonda Karshner. I just talked to her. She's home alone right now. Please pray for Cindy and Jim. Have not heard from her today. Please pray for Abby and Liam, Dora Parker, Jimmy Myers. Layla and her son Emil, Norma and Garnet Boyer, Ray and Donna Dunlap, she had her last chemo treatment, um, let's see, Elizabeth Jeffries, Bonnie Jean, Bonnie Jean's cat Misty, Bonnie Jean's dad, and Bonnie Jean's uh, sister-in-law Lori, the Jennifer Daly family and friends of Jennifer Daly, she passed away on March 20th. Um, Joyce Light and Judy Thompson. Okay. Let's smoke the bear back in here. Okay, so today it's a little bit longer reading today than it was last time, of course, because our psalm was really short then. Okay, let's see. We'll be reading Luke chapter 9, verses, or sorry, Luke chapter 9, verse. 28 through verse 50. The Transfiguration. Jesus heals a demon-possessed boy, and Jesus predicts his death a second time. And his disciples still just, they don't understand what he's trying to tell them. They don't click it with like, he's act, this is actually going to happen, but he's actually going to be killed and then raised from the dead the third day. They're not really understanding what he's putting down, what he's telling them. But they will. <laughs> Let's see, Psalm 73. It's a little longer of a psalm. And Proverbs chapter 12, verse 10. Easter's coming soon, you guys. It's on the 9th. Okay, so let's get started here with Luke. The Transfiguration. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto the mountainside to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning or as bright as snow. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They spoke about the departure, about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying, because he was in shock. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid. As they entered the cloud, a voice came from the cloud, saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. It was God talking to them. The next day, when they came down from the mountainside, a large crowd met him. A man in the crowd called out, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. 
for he is my only child. A spirit seizes him, and he is suddenly he suddenly screams. It throws him into convulsions so that he foams at the mouth. It scarcely ever leaves him and is destroying him. I begged your disciples to drive it out, but they could not. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you and put up with you? Bring your son here. Even while the boy was coming, the demon threw him to the ground in a convulsion. Thank you. But Jesus rebuked the impure spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And they were all amazed at the greatness of God. While everyone was marveling at all that Jesus did, he said to his disciples, Listen carefully to what I am about to tell you. Hidden from them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. But they did not understand what it meant. It was hidden from them so that they did not grasp it and they were afraid to ask him about it. An argument started among the disciples as to which of them would be the greatest. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, took a little child and had him stand beside him. Then he said to him, to them, he said to his disciples, whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me, for it is the one who is least among you all who is the greatest. Master, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he is not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for whoever is not against you is for you. He's not doing a bad thing, he's doing a good thing. And in God's name, and God is with them, helping them. Don't try to stop them from doing that. All right guys, and that's where we're stopping with um, the book of Luke today. All right, Psalm 73, this is book three, which includes Psalms 73 through 89. So this is Psalm three, a Psalm of Asaph. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from the common human burdens. They are not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes inequity. Their evil imaginations have no limits. They scoff and speak with malice. With arrogance, they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven, and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore, their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. They say, how would God know? Does the Most High know anything? How dare they have the nerve to even say that? They must think nothing can touch them, right? You know why all this good stuff's happening to them, right? Well, we'll talk about it at the end. This is what the wicked are like, always free of care. They go on amassing wealth. Pretty much get everything handed to them. They don't even have to try. They can spit in somebody's face and deny it, and everyone would believe them and lavish stuff on them. If I had spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply till I entered the sanctuary of God. 
then I understood their final destiny. Surely you place them on slippery ground. You cast them down to ruin. How suddenly are they destroyed, completely swept away my terrors. They are like a dream when one awakes. When you arise, Lord, you will despise them as fantasies. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you, yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. Amen. Amen. And I see that all the time. People that I know that are the most evil per people I've ever met in my life that have done some horribly evil things and they don't believe in God don't talk trash about God they don't want their kids knowing about God they don't want them believing in God they'll tell a lie right to your face they'd rather lie about stupid things than tell the truth stuff that you would like saying something's red when it's really black and then swear up and down to you no that's really red isn't it and their friends would say yes yes you're right it's red okay that's how it is but yet they get everything handed to them they don't even have to try the people could see them do something bad right in front of them and you'd tell them you see what they just done and that person would be like I didn't do that and they would take up for them. Happens all the time. I've seen it. Well, that's because the devil's on their side. The devil's on their side here on this earth. God's letting them make their choice. And they're making it. And they're choosing Satan. But they will answer for it in the end. And you shouldn't want them to go to hell. You should pray for them that they open their eyes and hearts and turn to God before it's too late. That's what you need to do. That's what I do. Believe me. They haven't changed yet, but I hope they do. Some don't believe. Some think they'll have a deathbed. There's plenty of time. I've told them about that too, but... You know, they always think there's going to be a tomorrow or a time to ask for forgiveness, but that's not always the case. That's not always the case. And doing that to their children is the worst thing that they could do to them. That's the worst thing you could do to your child, is try to keep them from God in any way. Whether you tell them God ain't real or God's bad, any way you do it, is 100% wrong. You're sending your kid to hell doing that. And that's 100% your responsibility. Because you're the one doing that to them. But they will get theirs in the end. The devil don't want to mess with them because they're on his side. The devil wants to mess with Christians here on this earth. Because we're on God's side and he wants to turn us from God. So he wants us to experience heartache and bad things. So hoping that we'll curse God and turn our backs on God and come to him. See, he don't have to do that with the people who are bad. He just keeps lavishing stuff on them. Yeah, that's right. Stay away from God. There is no God or God's bad. I do everything for you. You don't need him. 
Do you see what I'm saying? So that's why you being a good person and a Christian, if you're truly a, a good Christian, that's why bad, bad things will happen to you and good things will happen to the wicked. That's how it is, but you'll get your reward in the end. Okay. And now, ending today's Bible reading is Proverbs chapter 12, verse 10. The righteous care for the needs of their animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. And if you know somebody that hurts animals, that tells you right there what a bad person they are. Because once they start hurting animals, they'll hurt people next. That's uh, nine and a half times out of ten what happens. And anybody who can be mean to animals is not a good person. Because most animals, like kids, are innocent. Pure innocence. All they know is love. We've got some bad ones, animals in the bunch, of course that just attack for no reason and stuff. But just like there's bad people for no reason. Some are just mean. Just plain evil. But a loving animal come up to somebody and you just torture them and kill them. The kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. They're not really kind at all. It is very, very, very windy here. We got that high wind warning again from the electric company talking about down out power out power lines and stuff. Someone try to hurry up and get these done because the wind is very, very bad. So I'm gonna go get this uploaded. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring these souls bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Please remember to keep Sherman your prayers. Bye, guys. God bless.